What's up you phonies? How's it going? Welcome to another video. Today we're gonna make a very creepy visual effect in Blender. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be creepy if something came out of a tablet or iPad or a phone? And I figured, why don't I make an effect about that? Because I feel like that has potential for some kind of horror film. For today's effect, we are gonna need camera tracking, dynamic paint simulation, and very simple animation. So in my mind, it shouldn't be too difficult, but we're gonna see how it goes because I haven't done anything like that before. So we're gonna see. So when you start Blender, you probably some see something similar like me, a cube and a camera. I also have a few more windows than you probably. I have one for my camera view. So when I look through my camera, this is my camera, I can see whatever the camera sees. And here my general working space. On my down left here, which is gonna be more important later, I have my shader editor. And on top left here, I have my UVs, which hopefully we're not gonna to need today. So we're gonna delete our cube. We don't need our cube. We're also gonna delete our camera. We don't need that either. Go on your shader editor, go on world and delete our background. Now we need to motion track our footage. I shot the video already, I shot it right here. And if you want to use this footage too, I'm gonna have a link in the description where you can use it. Now go in plus, VFX, motion tracking. We open our video, this is my video. And as you can see, I have a regular tablet and I just opened a green screen layout with tracking markers on it. And that should work just fine, but we're gonna see. Set scene frames, prefetch. That's the first thing we need to do. Now click on this and blurry footage, click on normalize, and now we're gonna add a few markers. With control left click, we can create markers. So I'm and I'm gonna create markers and all those markers, which I have in my actual scene. Just pick all of them, preferably right in the center. And now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trackers, and that should be enough for a good track. But we're gonna see. Make sure you're on your first frame, click A, so you select them all and track forward. Now let's look at them a little closer if they all move the way they're supposed to. And it looks perfect. Now click on solve, select focal length, optical center, keyframe, and solve camera motion. We have a solve error of 0 0.49. Anything under one pixel is great, so we can work with that. Now we have to set up our orientation. When we click on set as background and set up tracking scene, we can see on our top layer that we already have a camera and when we watch through it we can see everything is moving but it just doesn't seem right because our object here it created the plane it's just not at the right spot so what we need to do is select our ground so we're going to select three trackers let's go with this one the corner one and maybe this one and when we hit on floor that is our floor now when we watch this now, now it's in the right position, but it still doesn't seem right. So we're gonna work on that for a, a little. Click on your center one and set origin. Now from the origin, we can determine where is the Y axis, where is the X axis. And let's say this here is gonna be our Y axis. Now we're gonna select two markers and uh, set our distance. An iPad is around 30 centimeters long 0.3 and let's see when we set the scale if it works better it seems fine but if it doesn't work like that we can always go back to the motion tracking tab but for now we're going to go on layout so up here i want to look through my camera deselect camera to view and let's look at our camera movement and it looks fine it looks very good to me so now we just have to scale our ground to the size of our ipad in edit mode, it might be easier if I just select my points and bring them to the edges of my screen. Now the next step is click on your camera, go on passport 2 and turn it up. Also go on background images and turn the opacity also up because you want the background image to be fully in there. Now I gotta say I did sloppy work with the tracking here. You definitely can do better. If I bring my ground up to my foreground, delete my light, Delete my background. Now I have the perfect setup. 
So now I want a head to come out of this. And I downloaded a head out of Sketchfab. This is what it looks like. And with texture, it looks like this. Pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna scale it down a little because I just want it to come out of the center. Let's rotate it. Also rotate it up a little. Let's do this a little to the side. So that's how I want my head to come up. Only to the neck like this and maybe then again disappear. So let's animate that. Let's go to the last frame where we want our head to be. And let's say here, we definitely want to overlap 3D and the real life, apply the scale. That's important, apply the scale when you change uh, some size, also on my plane here. So this is gonna be my last frame right now when I just look through it, this is what it looks like. So right in the middle, I want it to pop up 120 frames. So I'm just going to select my head, go on item and hover over location, hit I. I'm going to go on my first frame and sync it into my iPad. Now hover over location again, hit I. And I'm going to copy this one, this keyframe and also bring it to the end. So it's, it's dipping out and it's dipping back in. So right now this here is my shadow catcher because that's how it automatically does it uh, in Blender. I'm going to turn the sh turn it off as a shadow catcher. I'll go, go under visibility and shadow catcher turn this off. What I actually want my shadow catcher to be is everything around it. So I'm going to make a new plane, bring it a little lower, just a centimeter, a millimeter lower. And this is going to be my shadow catcher. So when it comes out, let's go in cycle so we can actually see. Let's add like whatever light so we can actually see what it's going to look like. So that's what it would look like. And here we can't see it anymore because we have our shadow catcher. If we turn the shadow catcher off, we would see, okay, our head is underneath here. We don't want that. So that's what, what the shadow catcher is for. Okay, that is that is cool. What I actually want to achieve here is that when our head comes out, that the screen is going to be a little wavy. And that's going to be cool. Also, first time we me doing that, but we'll see how it goes. For that, we applied the scale already. For that, we go in edit mode and add subdivisions to our layer here. So when we isolate it, and now I'm going to edge mode, and when I hit right click, subdivide, we can see those little crosses here. And if I increase this number by a lot, it's gonna be more, but we need like a lot, a lot. We need at least 30 subdivisions, and we, we're done. Now I need a simulation. So I go to physics properties, and dynamic paint with our ground selected here we can just change the name to screen with our screen selected it's it's on canvas and we add canvas now there's a few options here this all should be good but instead of surface type we don't want to paint it we want waves that's step number one now we select our head do the same thing go on dynamic paint it's under physics properties and instead of canvas, this is going to be the brush. Now when we add the brush and we play it, we can see that already something is happening. We shade smooth it so it looks a little better. Let's watch it again. And you can see how crazy that is. That can have uh, different reasons. Most likely is we don't have enough polygons, so we can add another sub D modifier. But also when we click on our canvas, on our screen, we can adjust the speed or the damping, the smoothness. So we just play around with those numbers a little until we get a result we like. And it's already better. So it pokes through our screen and pokes out. Let's increase the damping a little. So it looks like it's poking out of water. And that's pretty cool. Now, now the next step is we want our screen to actually be a screen, not just like a white background. So we go on our notes object check out the notes we have we don't have any mater material yet so we're going to give it a new material let's call it screen and let's just delete our principled bsdf and instead we're going to use a glass bsdf connect this with the surface now this is actually glass you can also give it a color so it's you know okay turned off screen and also going to reflect our hdri which is pretty cool. We can increase the roughness a little that we don't see as many reflections. But what I actually would like to do is 
you see how many fingerprints, how dirty my screen, my actual uh, iPad was. So I can make my digital screen also just as dirty. And for that, I have a few assets I can use. Imperfection maps, that's what they look like. Those are, for example, fingerprints. That could be perfect. Can also add scratches or I can combine those things. And that's pretty cool. So let's just start with the fingerprints. I'm gonna just drag and drop it in here and the alpha goes into the roughness. Now when I go directly in the surface with that, I can actually see what it does. And as you can see, it doesn't do much. So I'm gonna add another color ramp in between and increase the contrast. Also under, under fingerprints, I'm gonna hit Control T and use object instead. So now I can see my fingerprints. Of course, they're way too big. So I'm gonna adjust the scale something like that. Now again, I can play with the contrast so I can show, see how much I actually want. Maybe just the prints, nothing else. Now when I go actually into the roughness with that, the uh, glass BSDF into the surface, it's moving all as if there was water. Now it'd be great to adjust the color of my screen here to my actual screen. So I'm just gonna color pick this so that should align it. But also it's a matter of the lighting. I can see a little green is poking out on the bottom. So I'm just gonna adjust my screen a little that I'm gonna have more space here. Also, I see on this reflection here that there's a light behind. Also, I know that because I shot this right behind me and I know there is a light. So I'm just gonna add an area light somewhere where I believe the light should be. Make it the same size rotate in the right direction or in light settings make it stronger until I have a similar reflection like on my chair. When I turn on my shadow catcher it also shows me the, the shadow on my actual chair. Now if I want my head to be also a little reflective as if it came out of water I can click on it and see look at the material metallic is fully on roughness is fully on so when I, when I reduce the roughness it's going to be a little shinier like almost like a mirror that would be obviously too much. So I just dial those things in until it just looks a little more wet. Also with the roughness, I can do the same thing what I did before with my imperfection maps. I can give it a little texture, plug this into a roughness, have a color ramp in between, control T so I have a texture coordinate, go from object, let's check out only our roughness. This is what the roughness does, so I can just increase it a little increase the contrast and the principal VCF back in the surface and I don't want anything to be completely black I just want just a little of this effect just to give it a little more shape and if I lower my plane my shadow catcher it should also remove the green completely and that's it for this effect of course you can fine-tune it more and make it better and better but you, you get the idea, you know how to make it better your own way. So I'm very excited to see your guys' projects. And if you post them, please link me in your Instagram post or on X or wh wherever you post them because I want to see your work. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Toodoo.